We are very blessed with a community of thinkers and doers such as you in the audience. And that's what makes this city so great. Today we're talking about Ed, mayor, grandfather, father, Ed Bartholomew. He was Mr. Glens Falls and I learned so much from the man. I met Ed way back when he was mayor of Glens Falls. It's Carl DeSantis was chairman of the Republicans in Warren County and uh, Ed came to my front door and uh, said, uh, you know, Carl DeSantis thinks you ought to run for mayor. I said, I wouldn't touch that job with a 10-foot pole. Why don't you run? And he says, do you think I could? I says, why not? He says, geez, I'm pretty young. Well, I said, does that matter? And it turns out he was young and he did run and he won. I first met Ed Bartholomew in the summer of 1977. He was running for mayor and it was a very tough political year. Ed was a very young guy and it wasn't so much Republican versus Democrat partisan politics as it was old school versus new school. And Ed was decidedly new school. He had great ambition for the city he loved. And Glens Falls had been through a very tough time after World War II. As the servicemen came home, they moved to the suburbs. And so did the stores and restaurants and businesses. And Glens Falls downtown was in tough shape. Urban Renewal had cleared blocks of retail stores and left parking lots in their wake. And Ed was determined to bring the city back and to do that to bring back hope and optimism. And that was his great gift. The Robert Cronin administration before him built the Civic Center, but it was Ed who brought it to life. He lured Ned Harkness here as the first Civic Center director. Then he brought the Adirondack Red Wings to play professional hockey. And then he brought professional baseball to Glens Falls. And then he brought industry to Prines Island. Ed wanted to meld the sentimentality of hometown USA with a modern city. And he did that. He made, he made it the city on the rise. And that was his great gift, that he could imbue the community with his own optimism and energy and make Glens Falls one of the great small cities in America. And I've known Ed Bartholomew for a very long time. He was the mayor of Glens Falls when I was in high school. And who knew he was 28 years old? He seemed incredible. And there were so many things that I benefited from because of Ed's hard work for our city of Glens Falls. So personally, I feel endeared to Ed for all the wonderful memories that I have growing up, so much so that I moved back with my own family. A year ago goals at a meeting and they asked me if I had a vision of the project that we were working on. And I said, I'm not a visionary, but I know somebody who was. And that was Ed Bartholomew. What can I say about Ed? Ed's a wonderful person, a great friend. He was um, one to not ever turn anybody away who needed help. A um, couple times I remember when my son, of course, I called him Mario Andretti, um, would get a speeding ticket. Ed would be there for me and help us figure out how to go and take care of it. Um, my son was very upset when he heard the news of Ed. Um, like I said, he's always there and it's going to be really hard to not see him and his smiling face every day. He would come in the office and he would, you know, hey, Bern, and I'd be, hey, Ed. You know, he was such a happy guy most of the time. So. To not see him is really hard. He was loved by many. I guess that's all I can say. Ed was like the lifetime mayor of Glens Falls for the for the poor uh, of our community. When people had landlord disputes or they had employment issues or there were community issues. Uh, neighborhood community issues such as you know condition of housing or drug dealers in the neighborhood they called Ed and Ed behind the scenes uh, in, intervened, intervened for them and uh, he was a quiet voice he was someone they trusted and um, that's an aspect that probably a lot of people don't know about Ed. 
You know, I think the biggest thing is um, I had to really think about it as far as when I heard he passed away, um, what he did for Glens Falls, which everybody's talking about, but what he did for sports in our area, which I'm a sports guy, so it's, and I was here back in the 80s, 80 with him 40 years ago when he built East Field. So I, I, I think about it and I go, I also got back here because of Ed Bartholomew. He called me up and said, well, I, I talked to him on the phone and uh, we talked about the situation here at East Field. He said, why don't you go over and see if you can help him out over there. And next thing you know, five years later, here I am again, back in baseball, same place I started with East Field. And, and Ed was the man that made, made this happen and, uh, and the whole city, I mean, the whole city supported. But Ed had a vision. Um, for me, it's just amazing and sad at the same time what he did for us. It was back in 1981, there was no lights here. We got the lights, Ed got the lights. Uh, we had no building. The building we had was a press box from the uh, Olympics, 1980 Olympics. And it came from, you know, uh, Lake Placid. And it was put up here on the hill. And next thing you know, we got a building built. Uh, Nick Scartelli, who was uh, and Bob Scavone with the city, they okay. built a building. And uh, we we're all set for opening day. And Ed called me up, Ed was out of town. He said, we can't open the building. We didn't get a CO. So I said, Really? He goes, no, can't do it. And it was for opening day. So Bob, uh, uh, Nick Scartelli said, Ben, you got to open it up. We built this for you. I said, well, the mayor said there's no CO. And, and uh, Nick says, I'm the guy that gives a CO. Let's open this thing up. Mayor was a little mad at me for a couple of days. You know, he didn't talk to me, but then all of a sudden he came back over and he says, you know, you did the right thing and it said, thank you, you know, whatever. So I think back at that and that was 40 years ago. And the building's still here. The ballpark is here. We've got a lot of uh, new improvements that have happened. and. And if it wasn't for Ed, this place wouldn't be here. So I'm grateful to him and, and really sad, again, at the same time, of you know, Glens Falls losing a, a real visionary type person that's helped the growth of the city so much. And I know definitely his shoes are going to be hard to fill. I just wanted to give a little background on Greater Glens Falls Transit and Ed Bartholomew. Uh, the transit system was created in 1984 by Ed. You know, while on the surface that may not seem particularly noteworthy, uh, in Greater Glens Falls Transit's case, um, it's a very unique organization. Uh, Ed uh, saw a need for transportation, and the way it was formed, uh, the system is a department of the city of Glens Falls, but it's only possible through the cooperation of 11 contiguous municipalities that span three different counties. There is not another organization like it in New York State, and possibly not even in the country. Uh, it is really a great example of intergovernmental cooperation. It's something that Ed had told me several times, that it was one of his proudest accomplishments during his time as mayor of Glens Falls. I not only knew Ed Bartholomew as a client, but also personally because his daughter Katie and her husband Kevin are good friends with my husband Corey. Um, when I think of Ed, I think about um, how he orchestrated so much of what happens in Glens Falls. He's the driving force the visionary, and and not just the, the person with the ideas, but the person who made things happen. This week is a sad week here in Burns Falls as we lost one of our uh, mentors for the city, one of the people that um, has taken Burns Falls um, from back in the 70s to the present day um, and done so much for us that um, it's hard to put in words, you know, how I personally feel about, you know, losing that uh, Ed Bartholomew uh, you know, pretty much was Glens Falls. Ed uh, did so many different things and a lot of people have read over the last few days some of his accomplishments which would be helping with the Civic Center, you know, bringing Glens Falls transportation for the bus system, you know, starting uh, uh, community development with the Housing and Urban Development Organization, you know, East Field bringing the minor league sports with the hockey team and also the baseball team. Just all these things. And, and for me to, to be my mentor and to help me and to, as I like to say, have my back when I, you know, being a brand new mayor, even though I was a councilman, he was able to, you know, put me in the right direction and he, you know, always would have things ready for me. So, like, I would get a phone call that would say, uh, hey, Dan, you got to be here or such and such. And I, don't worry about it. I already wrote your speech. And he would just do everything that I needed. So he made my job so much easier and, and he's going to be dearly missed by me. Ed was one of those people who everything that he did, he let me know why he was doing it. And I found out in later years that Ed, in my view, was always one or two steps ahead of everybody else. 
we knew where things stood here, but he knew in advance where things stood beyond that. And that was one of Ed's talents. He had many talents. I, I think I wrote a letter to the editor, to Mark Frost in the Chronicle, and I said that he was uh, not only a leader, but a visionary. I, I really believe that Ed was a man who, who had a purpose, and his purpose was helping out the city and the region. And, uh, and he did it in a good way. He, he was kind to people. He was a gentleman. He, uh, he knew everybody in the world. He knew the connections, but he also knew how to play the game. And, and that's what I remember about Ed. Ed was kind enough to meet with me when I decided to run for office. Uh, he had had some experience with my family. He was friends with my father and the, the former Mayor Cronin and uh, loved to tell stories about Mayor Cronin and his, his election. And, and when Ed um, became uh, mayor, Mayor Cronin called him and said that he had to go to confession because for the first time ever he had voted for a Republican and that was Ed Bartholomew. Um, he was very kind to me um, when, I, when I came in. I knew nothing about what I was doing, about running for office, and Ed took the time out to meet with me and tell me uh, things like walk the streets, knock on the doors, and don't forget to ask for the vote. Uh, if you do that, if you if you knock on doors enough, you'll win your election, and and, and that proved to be the case. I am forever grateful uh, to to Ed and the kindness that he showed me in meeting with me. He certainly didn't have to. He taught me two things I thought that have always stick with me uh, right from when I started working for the city. One was that this is a region and. What's good for the city is good for the county and good for the region and vice versa. That Glens Falls is not an island unto itself. And the other was that Ed reached across the aisle. He knew that there had to be consensus, that people had to come to some common ground for the common good. And, and those were two keys that I thought from Ed that, that never changed. And, uh, and that will be a lasting tribute to him. The things that he accomplished that we've read about and, and heard about were all through, through hard work and through reaching across the aisle, through touching others. The first word that comes to mind when I think of Ed Bartholomew is gracious. Um, I met Ed when I was elected as a councilwoman in 2006. And although we were on different sides of the aisle, Ed was so gracious to share with me um, tips and things to do and kind of mentor me a little bit. Um, he never looked at me as a newbie. He always looked at me as somebody that could do the job and could do it well. So I always appreciate, appreciated that about Ed. And um, just not only gracious in his mentorship, but gracious in everything he did. He was gracious with people in the community. He was gracious financially with people in need. Um, and I just, that word just sticks in my mind about who Ed is. When I felt like a little kid at the table, Ed always made me feel welcome. Uh, he took a chance on Advocate. I consider him the $10 million man. And actually when um, the DRI uh, was announced, had a t-shirt made that said $10 million man. and. Uh, and gave it to his, you know, left it in his office that said love, love from Glens Falls, because we all, we all appreciated him collectively. So, um, I know he just started this uh, small business recovery fund. He cared about businesses. He cared about people and, um, we're really going to miss him, but his legacy lives on in so many things that have, uh, happened in Glens Falls and are about to happen. I, I went through, essentially, I went through life with Ed Bartholomew. Grew up with him, he was a year ahead of me. Uh, his sister Glenda was in my class all the way through. We went through Kensington Road School, Glens Falls Junior High, Glens Falls High School together. And so I watched him and I, I say our lives were intertwined. He was uh, so involved, we kind of made the same decision, come back to Glens Falls, accomplish what we could for Glens Falls. The depth of his understanding and appreciation for Glens Falls, I miss already. The conversation, we didn't talk on any regular basis, but every time we talked, it was a meaningful conversation. And so that's what I'm gonna miss is 
his nuanced understanding, his sense of what's called a very proud place, which places a lot of obligation on the people who live here and believe in it. So we worked very conscious all the time. And Ed was always conscious of the people who had come before us, the Henry Crandalls and the Samuel Cryans. In thinking about Ed Bartholomew and all that he has done for our community, I can't help but think of how many people can say that he has been a part of their lives. And I certainly can say that. I've known Ed for years and years. He's been so supportive of me, helping me in every step of the way, from being on the county, the state assembly, the Senate. And when I first got to the Senate, he was one of the lead counsels to Senator Bruno. So he was my person who showed me the ropes and went through it. But uh, he loved, loved, loved Glens Falls and this area, and he's done so much for it. So I can't say enough about how much he will be missed. And, um, you know, we always talk about big shoes to follow. I don't think anybody can fill his shoes. He just worked and never, never gave up on something until he had tried every single avenue and every bit of energy that he had in him to make it happen. So thank you, Ed, for all you've done. I'll miss you. I thought Glenn Falls needed to be, have a tool for promotion. So I went around to all the businesses and collected up some monies from each business, about $1,000, and I went to him. And I said, we need to do a brochure. And I had the brochure all ready in my hand. And he must have thought it was a good idea. He then had so many printed that we had them for years. So anyway, that was my first encounter. Then I was, uh, I had founded the World of the International Arts and Culture Association. And we did our very first International Festival of the Adirondacks in City Park, and he came, and I had the photo of him when he was uh, in his 30s. More recently, I've been involved with him when we, from about five years ago, when he thought it was a good idea to consider Glens Falls as the gateway to the Adirondacks. And he was very, something not usually mentioned, but he was very supportive of the arts. And so he was very, he helped uh, us uh, write a, a, a proposal to obtain some uh, small proportion of the family endowment. So, and he was always very welcoming. To all of us. I've known Ed Bartholomew almost all my life. His sister Francie and I um, started out in kindergarten together at Kensington Road School. He was a proud member of the first class to graduate from Kensington Road School, which he always, always reminded us that we would never, never have on him. And uh, we would be playing in their backyard and he would be coming home from football practice. and. Uh, and his mother would always have us sing, um, You've Gotta Be a Football Hero, which apparently was a song that she remembered from her high school days. Um, so I've, I, I've got long, long history with Ed Bartholomew and, and hero worship. So it's hard to sit here and tell you what a whole this man's passing creates for all of us, um, personally, obviously, but here at City Hall, it's, it's, it's irretrievable what we have lost. And you should all know what this man did quietly for all of you. You will never know the depth of his involvement here. And he did it from his heart. Such a, such a wonderful, wonderful advocate for our city and for our people, and we will miss him. And I didn't really know Ed until I became a councilman almost seven years ago. 
but I had occasion to go over Ed's office quite often. And we had long chats, not only about the city, but about personal things, memories of childhood. Ed's office was like unbelievable. The stuff that he had scattered all over, the reams of paper in his office. But then he says, well, let's go into the conference room and talk. Well, I go in there and the whole six foot conference room table is covered with stuff. I said, I'm sure you're the only one that remembers everything that's here. And he says, yeah, pretty much. But um, he was just great for the city. And I didn't really actually know he was even a lawyer, um, which is tremendous in itself. But uh, all the things he did for the city, the Civic Center, and I'm just so disappointed and sad that he will not get to see South Street when it's in entirety, when it's done. But Ed was just a, an okay guy, just a great guy. He always said a, a, a big hello to me, always a big smile, a handshake. And we talked about the East End because that's where I grew up in town. And Ed talked about the East End to the point where I thought he was, at one point I thought he must be an East Ender. He knew so much about the East End, but just a great guy. And, uh, I miss him. I worked for Ed many years ago. He was the first one to hire me as assistant superintendent. That was under Larry Fredella. Well, uh, he, and uh, him and I go back so many years, you know, and a lot of people don't realize this. Uh, he did, he never really stopped to smell the roses. He always worked hard. You ever walk into his office, he had papers scattered from one end to the other. You know, and I always ask him how you get ever and he could find them wherever you want. A lot of people don't realize this. My wife worked for Cornell Property Extension uh, years ago, and was, he asked, she asked Ed if he would come and milk a cow, a contest. <laughs> so he came over to Washington County, the fair, and he milked a cow with other people, and he won. I don't understand it, but he won. It must be he was a Washington County guy. But anyway. Long story short, I used to love his means, and I always said to him about means. You, you know, the best means you have is always the ones you have, and it really was good. But and long and short of the whole thing, you know, I was shocked to see him go. I didn't want to see him go. He was a good friend of my, me and my wife's, and I just wanted to say something. I'll see you later, Ed. I miss you, and the city's going to be lost without you. I don't think anybody's going to take up the reins and carry it on. Thank you for everything you give me. Well, the thing I think about Ed is he he was always busy. Um, I, I didn't see Ed sit down much. Most of my interaction with Ed happened right here. He'd come, he was waiting to meet with the mayor. So he'd come in here, but he never sat in one of these chairs. He just paced back and forth, talking the whole time. He'd be telling me about whatever he was working on or some of the challenges he was encountering. And uh, he was just busy all the time. Uh, I never saw Ed at rest. And I think that's the, uh, the legacy I will remember most. Just a, a very busy guy. I'm the principal of Jackson Heights, but how I really have gotten to know Ed Bartholomew is he's the grandfather of Trevor and Kellen Driscoll. And those boys both went through Jackson Heights. And Ed Bartholomew was the most incredible grandfather. He came to every event that we had, be it a concert, be it a fall fun fair, be it our Jimmer basketball dedication, our family picnics. He was there to support his grandsons and he would bring them to school sometimes. And he'd give me a little smile, tilt his head, and say thank you for all the hard work that you and your teachers and everyone are doing, and make sure you keep those boys in line. And he always did it with a smile, and he was really a pleasure to see every time he came. And I know Callan and Trevor are going to miss their grandfather incredibly, but I hope that they remember how much he was here and how much love and support that he gave them as they came through Jackson Heights. So Ed Bartholomew, you will be missed not only in the city, but at Jackson Heights as well.
we, we really are going to miss him a lot. And, and myself, I grew old with him. Because we were both, he, I was a little older than he when I first met him. He was in his 30s and I was in my 40s. And he now just turned 70 and I'm in my 80s. So, you know, we did grow old together. So I really feel very sad that this has happened and uh, we certainly offer our sentiments to To recognize what we wanted to do was try to carry that ball forward, in this case, carry that football forward, uh, to feel a sense of still making progress in Glens Falls. Uh, I call it the busiest little city in America, and it's that way. It overachieves because so many people try to do the right thing, and Ed was in a, got himself in a position, both as mayor and then as president of EDC uh, Warren County, to affect that progress in a huge way. And I just think of him as right to the very end, he was plugged in and working from his hospital bed uh, at St. Peter's, still uh, chugging right along, doing this, having the same drive that he had when he made the great play that won the, the final game of his high school football career and saved Glens Falls in his undefeated season. So it was to watch that progress, but also to be involved in that progress with him. Uh, it was great, it, it, it's, and it's, it's a fun thing to think about, even as we uh, suffer the loss. I first heard of the Christian spirit of Ed Bartholomew about 20 years before I actually met him. It was around 1979 or 1980, and a group of us from our church in Ticonderoga were coming down uh, to City Park, to a concert by Jeff Steinberg, a Christian uh, singer. And Ed had, would, as mayor, helped to arrange it. And a woman in our church said to me, the mayor of Glens Falls is a Christian. Fast forward about 20 years to 1999, Christmas Day. Um, I attended the Christmas service Christmas Day service at Christ Church, and Ed and uh, Royal Fishbeck were leading the service. This was uh, some years before Ed started the Christmas breakfast. And Ed recognized me from the post star and introduced himself and got acquainted after the service. And we have been uh, friends and um Co-journers on the uh, the Christchurch path for many years. Um, many times uh, I'd get to church on Sunday and Ed would give me a news tip, which was always appreciated. Uh, but more important than that, um, we, we volunteered together on the Saturday supper, Christmas breakfast, and the Vesper services, and um, knew each other very well. And, and yet we're able to have that friendship separate from uh, the, the rigors of journalism and uh, government official. Another thing that Ed and I had in common is we often went to funerals, uh, whether it be someone from Christchurch or uh, someone in the community. And we often sat together at funerals because we knew each other. Looking forward to when we can have a memorial service for Ed with Charles Wesley hymns that he loved so much and uh, thoughts about John Wesley, the founder of Methodism, that, that he often uh, mentioned when he made announcements. And Lillian and the family, are my prayers are with you, and uh, Godspeed. He would get into trouble sometimes on his computer and he would say, Bertie, can you come down here and get me out of this mess? And me, of course, not having any technical background, would go, sure, I'll see what I can do. And I would run down to his office and we would figure it out and he would be so thankful. And we would laugh and I would go back to my office going, oh, fixed another problem. <laughs> and Ed would think he would be very grateful for me to come down and help. So. 
like I said, he was always grateful and he was always helpful for somebody. You know, he just, he opened his heart to everybody. He was a good person. We need more of them around. So we miss you, Ed, already. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ed, for the great partnership between the Warren County EDC and the Adirondack Regional Chamber of Commerce. But more importantly, thank you so much for being such a great mentor and for somebody that put the community first and foremost, and you always put yourself last. Never expecting anything in return, except just to make our community the best place to live in the world. God bless, Ed. And I am. Um... I was saying earlier today that in Hollywood, Kevin Bacon, there's seven degrees to Kevin Bacon. It means anybody you can meet in Hollywood or talk about, it gets back to Kevin Bacon in seven degrees. And I think that's it in the city of Glens Falls. Doesn't matter where you travel, where you go, when you tell people you're from Glens Falls, somehow the conversation gets back to, do you know Ed Bartholomew? And he certainly will be missed. So rest in peace, my friend, and um, thank you for all you did for our community. I really refer to Ed as the wizard because if anybody could solve the problem or find the person, it was Ed Bartholomew. And he was Mr. Glens Falls. I work hard every day to hopefully accomplish the many things uh, that Ed has accomplished on my level. And I will work hard to make sure that Ed's message and Ed's work is not forgotten. He was a wonderful, wonderful mentor, wonderful person, and I look forward to being a soldier on a f the field for a long time, working on Ed's many, many, many causes. And as you see, I brought some memorabilia with me. He was responsible for the largest attended basketball game event at the Cool Insuring Arena, formerly the Glens Falls. He also had a love of the Adirondack Red Wings. And, you know, he just could not stop talking about Glens Falls. But wherever he went, whether it was Washington, D.C., Albany, New York, anywhere in the state, he always brought people with him and ideas. He knew so many people. I mean, even Ed could bring everyone to the table. And to bring Senator Schumer to New Way lunch for a hot dog, only Ed could do that. I will miss you immensely, Ed, but I will carry on. When I think about Ed Bartholomew, I will remember somebody who brought out the best in us. He believed in this region like nobody else. He worked harder than anybody. He was a great mentor. And most importantly, he was a good man. Ed accomplished so much in his life, and we will continue accomplishing that work in his memory. Thank you, Ed, for a life well lived. I've had the honor and pleasure of working with Ed over many years. And I know death of a loved one and friend and co-worker is never easy. It touches us all differently, but we can take solace in the fact that Ed is with his creator and that we will all be together again when the Lord says it's our time. Ed has touched so many people's lives over the years and has left his footprints in the sands of our community. If you want to see Ed's handiwork, you don't have to look far, because chances are he helped a neighbor replace a leaking roof, or saved a neighbor's job by keeping it in the community, or by changing the skyline and landscape of our city. I've enjoyed my many conversations with Ed over the years. We saw eye to eye on so many things. But most importantly, our passion and our love for the city of Glens Falls, on what it was, what it is, and what it could be. I know of no other way of honoring Ed's memory than to live a life he lived, helping and sharing God's grace with others, and never stop working towards the what could be so it can be in the city. During this grieving process and beyond, please know there is a grateful community behind you. I hope over time you get to hear all the wonderful stories about Ed and the people who he had touched by his life well lived. I pray God grants you the peace and the comfort during this difficult time. And I'm humbled to be able to offer these remarks. May God bless you and keep you. We soldier on and we, we carry the torch. 
Correct. Um, I'm still in shock and disbelief. And, uh, you know, we will get through this, but we will be at a loss. As I said in my letter to, to Mark Frost, that he will be, you know, he will be missed, but he will never be forgotten. When the music fades into the past When my days of life are through What will be remembered of where I've come When all is said and done Will they say I loved my family That I was a faithful friend That I lived to tell of God's own son When all is said and done forget my name and the songs I've sung every rhyme and every tune just remember the truth of Jesus love when all is said and done when and done.